Hi Aries. So welcome to your December, December 2020 reading. We finally made it. Here we are. Um, let's talk about astrology really quick. So we have the Saturn and Jupiter moving from Capricorn, which would be your 10th house, to Aquarius. So there's going to be more of a an emphasis on your friends, on the community, on how you are um, interacting with other people. So Saturn will be in Aquarius for the next two and a half years. Jupiter moves through Aquarius pretty quickly and in May will go, May 2021, will go into Pisces briefly and then go back into Aquarius when it retrogrades and then finishes off there. So um, really jumping back and forth between your 11th and 12th houses. So that'll be interesting for you guys next year. And we'll talk about that more as it comes up. But um, then we have these eclipses that are happening right now and really expanding, you know, this Gemini eclipse. So we have the Gemini lunar eclipse on November 30th, which is tomorrow. And it's going to be really early in the morning um, doing this the day before the eclipse. Um, and then we'll have the Sagittarius eclipse on December 14th. And then we have the Cancer lunar eclipse on December 30th. So we have three eclipses in a row. Um, and the biggest thing here is about your expansion. And it's like it's time for you to start communicating differently with people. Um, for a long time, you've, it's almost as if you've had to come to other people's levels. Like you've sort of, like I call it the dumbed down approach. Like sometimes we have to pull ourselves down in order to relate to other people because they're not necessarily at our level. And I feel like that's exhaust like, like that you've exhausted that. Like you're not, that's, you're not interested. <laughs> you're not interested in bringing yourself down to somebody's level anymore. And so, and I, especially with this Sagittarius solar eclipse that's happening on December 14th, there's a really a uh, big opportunity for you to cut the people and the things out of your life that just drain your energy that you no longer have to, like there's there's no reason for you to have to like look at certain situations and be like how can I conform to this right so I think that in the biggest way you're creating this space for yourself where you can evolve and a lot of that means having to release people, situations, jobs, environments, like whatever it is, right? But you're ready to do it. Like it's time. You're ready to do that. And um, having the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction <laughs> in Aquarius that's happening on December 21st. So Capricorn season, the darkest day of the year, Saturn and Jupiter conjuncting. And so this is really, really, really showing you where that, that you, where your community is, right? And, and, you know, Saturn, yes, he's a restrictive energy, but he's disciplined. Like, he just wants people to do things the right way. <laughs> like, do it the right way the first time so you don't have to, like, relearn the lesson six times. And Saturn's also about time. So really giving, giving yourself, like, all the space in the world to say this is where I belong and I'm not going to dumb myself down to belong elsewhere right like I this is where I want to be because this is where I find my peace if it's not bringing you peace if it's not bringing you joy if it's not evolving you in some way shape or form you're done with it like that's what your December is going to look like and honestly probably for a while after that you're going to be cleaning out your friendship closet, cleaning out your community closet. Like it's just, you can, it, 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 you get to a point to where it's just exhausting and you don't want to do it anymore. So, um, love the people who, not love the people, love everybody unconditionally, but don't spend your energy on the people that don't spend their energy on you. Like if you're the one that's always giving and giving and giving and giving, 
it's time and I, and you you sort of all already know that right like as we even start getting into the cards it's I like, I feel like Aries is taking this time and opportunity to level themselves up in a way that other people are just kind of looking at like where did this come from like it might be a shock to some people but I don't think that I, it's the reason why you're doing this is because you want more out of life you want more out of um, the journey I don't know any Aries that is uh, somebody who settles. Like, I've never known you guys to settle, ever. And it's because you genuinely know what you want. And maybe you have settled in the past and you realized what a mistake it was to settle for things. And now you're just getting honest with yourself and moving forward. And so the plans, right? And you want to go to the places and you want to go to the people and you want to see all the possibilities um when it comes to your vibrational level and not that of somebody else's or not bringing it down and i think the biggest thing is you not sabotaging yourself and really trusting your own intuition to do it i think that's fair to say we all we all have those moments where we second guess our choices right all of us do but the first card that came out was the High Priestess. So your intuition is very, very, very on point and specific right now. Like, I really want you to pay attention to what your gut feelings are telling you. Um, because I think that some of them, you're like, I don't even know that I want to. Like, I feel like you're avoiding something with the Four of Cups here. So I have the High Priestess and the Four of Cups. And then I have the Knight of Cups. And some of it maybe i feel like there are some offers on the table and because you can't really see a road to the offers or you know like how do i get there i don't even know how i'm gonna get there because you're not able to really see a direct path it's almost as if you're not it's you're avoiding <laughs> it feels like you're avoiding something here you're avoiding like a direct type of energy which is really interesting. So the Knight of Cups and the Four of Cups. And then I have the Chariot, the Page of Swords, and the Five of Swords. There's some kind of conversation that needs to be had. And this conversation is going to level your journey up. It's going to push you forward in the direction that you're supposed to be going in. But this Five of Swords over here tells me that you're a little bit hesitant about having the conversation. And maybe that's what you're avoiding. You're avoiding the, um, this Four of Cups is the avoidance tactic um, that's uh, confrontation. Like you don't want to have the confrontation, right? And that Five of Swords is telling you that the confrontation is going to look a particular way. And I guarantee you that you are making it worse in your mind than it actually is. Like prove me wrong. Because I, I almost want to bet that once you have the conversation, it won't be as bad as you thought it was going to be. I bet. Let's see what that high priestess is. Let's see. Because you already know. You already know that you're on a particular path. You already know that the direction that you're going in is what you want right so let's see what this avoidance is you could be dealing with a pisces energy oh you're afraid to lose it all so we have you could be dealing with a pisces energy or just a water energy in general could even be a cancer um i don't have scorpio down here but you know it could be scorpio too um, but the King of Cups on the High Priestess, the King of Cups is somebody that has a lot of emotions, but he doesn't necessarily show all of the emotions that he's having. Then we have the Ten of Pentacles on the Four of Cups. You know, it's interesting because a lot of times when, and this is sort of like a human nature thing, a lot of times when 
we can see the path where everything is falling into place and it's almost like, oh man, I have everything that I've ever wanted right now, right here. Um, you get scared and you start to go backwards because once you have things that you truly care about, then the fear of losing it shows up. I don't know if you've ever recognized that about any kind of situations that you're in or anything like that, but um, it's just like a common fact that we as humans do those kinds of things because that Ten of Pentacles secures long-term stability and happiness, and I feel like it's just right there, but you can't, like you really want to see it, but there's you're avoiding something about it. You're avoiding something about it. Um, let's see what this Knight of Cups is. Because I feel like, and it could be that this King of Cups is approaching you or has already approached you. Um, oh, yeah, look at that. And you manifested this. You manifested this life. You manifested this abundance just by loving yourself completely so we have the ace of cups and the magician on the night i love this reading for you this is amazing so the ace of cups and the, the magician on the knight of cups there was definitely like you wanted something right that's what, how manifestation works you wanted something and then you embodied it yourself so when we really want to manifest something into our life, and it's not about um, the materialistic things, it's not about manifesting the materialistic things, but truly manifesting the desires of your soul, you have to fully embody that. So if you want to have somebody approach you with love, you have to manifest, you have to embody the love that you want. So you have to love yourself in the same way that some that you want somebody else to love you and if you want to embody if you want to have that ten of pentacles abundance long-term stable it's not going anywhere kind of abundance you have to embody that stability and that abundance within yourself and know that you're already there you have already arrived and if you don't feel that you have already arrived, then you have to do the work inside yourself because it's not about what your environment looks like. It's not about who it is that's approaching you. It's not about what your environment looks like or who it is. It's about how you feel about yourself and then attracting that in. It's the energy that manipulates the space, right? It's the energy that creates the matter. It's not the matter that creates the energy. You learn, you'll learn more about that if you sign up for my manifesting workshop that's on December 14th. It's in the evening. Um, the last one that we did was really amazing. And it's really about learning um, how to feel better. It's not just about manifesting your desires. It's really about like physiologically feeling better about where you are currently in the present moment. And that's how you're going to manifest things. So if you haven't signed up for the workshop or you didn't do it last time, I'm going to highly recommend that you do it because you guys are on a roll for it. And you're ready. You're ready to have the desires. You're ready to embody the love. You're ready to embody the stability. And then you're ready to journey forward, right, with the chariot. And I think that really living within your truth and creating from a space of your own That is honestly so much more, oh, there you are. <laughs> there, that's exactly what I was going to say, but, you know, woo, okay. Um, humbling yourself, right? Humbling yourself and starting sort of a new journey within yourself. And here's the thing, though, is you could easily sabotage this if you want to. I don't know why anybody would want to. But you could easily sabotage this by confusing yourself. So we got the lovers on the chariot. 
Why am I not surprised by that? I know so many Aries right now that are like coming together with their divine counterparts, but the thing with the lovers and coming together with your divine counterpart, um, I think the biggest thing here is knowing that you are aligned with yourself first. I mean, that's really what the lovers is. It's, you know, creating that divine masculine, divine feminine, creating the um, alignment between the two energies within yourself, knowing that you're not going to settle anymore. You could actually be traveling to see a divine counterpart or um, just knowing that now you are on the path to get there. If you haven't already met this person, this King of Cups, um, it's definitely something that is in your, 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 your energy. Like you're really trying to embody the person that you want to attract into your life. And I think that, that humbling yourself, right? Like starting a new journey and humbling yourself being really, really honest about where you have settled in the past and where you have allowed situations in the past to make you feel small and you no longer want to do that. And you don't want to people please like, oh man, do I, I know some areas that can people please. Hmm. But you're creating this energy and confidence. But you gotta, everybody has to start somewhere, right? So and everybody's probably at different aspects of this journey too. It's not like everybody's going to be in the same spot. Some of you are just starting out on the alignment journey. <coughs> Excuse me. Just getting things stuck in my throat now. Uh, but some of you are just starting out on the alignment journey. Some of you are right in the middle of it. Some of you have, you know, been through three quarters of it. And some of you have met your counterpart and you are together now. But there's, um, because we have different levels of it, each time we evolve through each of those levels, you have to evolve yourself up another, just like another notch you know, and keep pushing yourself and evolving yourself up another notch. You can sabotage this by questioning everything. If you want to, you can analyze this to death with the seven of cups on the five of swords. You can analyze every little tiny movement or you can just surrender. The fool, seven of wands, and the Six of Wands. We have the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck with the Nine of Swords. Don't give your energy to the negative. Don't give your energy to the negative thought processes that you are creating through this because um, once you recognize that that negative thought comes up in your mind, I want you to automatically shift it. Like, you know, what if I never find somebody that's going to love me? The thing that I want you to do about shifting that kind of a negative thought is saying, I'm going to love myself so much that when somebody comes along and loves me the same, that's an added bonus, but it doesn't complete me, right? So we need to look at our perceptions and change our narratives because the surrender part may possibly be the hardest, like embodying the love and then just letting it go, right? So the Fool and the Seven of Wands and the Six of Wands and creating those healthy, loving boundaries where you're vulnerable enough and your heart is open enough to be soft and to love, but you take no shit. You know? Like, this isn't about you trying to make sure that everybody else feels good. This is about someone coming into your life and helping you to feel good because that's what you deserve. Because for how long have you actually been making sure that everybody else is okay? When was the last time somebody made sure you were okay? You know? So, but again, very easy for you to get up in your mind and create that 
like what if, what if, what if. Let's not even think the words what if, especially during eclipse season, because you could really, like there's a lot of fated and destined events that are happening right now. And you can easily shift your energy into a negative spot if that's where your focus is. See the six of, ooh, look at that. Six of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Thank you very much for showing up. Instead of keeping your energy on the worry and knowing that you've already been through the struggle, like you've already gone through all of the pain and the heartache and the struggle, and it's okay for you to relax a little, I promise. Some of you are still like, eee! Now, if you wanted a work reading, money looks good. Um, I feel like you guys are sort of ignoring the money part of it. Right now, I think that you're just sort of wanting to create from a space of love and not necessarily create from a space of material gain. Um, and, you know, whatever that means for you. But that's the thing is like, it's the perspective shift for you and recognizing how far you've come from there. So that's, that's how we're going to end December, right? Is, is recognizing um, the space you're in now and embodying what you want for the future. So awesome. Um, I do have some forecasts, some six month forecast readings available. I think they're for like the end of December or closer to the end of December. So if you want to get a spot, now is the time to do it. I don't know how long I'm going to have those available because um, I think that I've already overwhelmed myself, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but so yeah, the six month ones and the manifesting workshop on December 14th, all of that information is in the description box. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. I'm really excited. Come join us in the memberships. Um, this month, the extra reading for the membership and like you guys get read like the reading updates every single day with memberships. You get previews on astrological events that are happening before the public does. You get um, the extended forecast reading. So I'll be doing the general forecast readings coming up in December. And then you'll also get the extended for the rest of the year for July through December. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and we just have a great time in the memberships. It's a wonderful family to be a part of. Like, I'm so blessed that, that this is my family. I just am blessed. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you soon. Bye.